Right. Remember that trigonometry is all about this, this, this basis. Pongas points out, you know, abang in local cool because it will confuse us. We think of those basics. I just begin now. I know, I know for a fact that I've got to change this into sine x over cos x. Ah, when I look at this, it's a double angle. I know that this has to do with double angle. What is this? I don't know this. Okay, this side. I'm going to take the left hand side. Let's take the left hand side and prove that it is equal to the right hand side. I know here, whenever I see u, 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 u tan x, u tan x is the same as sine x over cos x. So it's advisable that when we do this problem to change everything into sine and cos. So to do that, tan x is the same as sine x over cos x minus. Okay, it's going to be minus one. But I like to work with um, uh, common denominators, when, where the denominators are the same when I'm working with fractions. So I'm going to change my one into, if I divide, so that this will have the same denominators, this will be cos x. So for me to get this one, I'll definitely have to, cos, to have cos x there. So this is minus one, but I'm making the denominators to be the same so that it will be easier for me to work with this. This is multiplied by, okay. Do I know this? Yes, I know it. It is what? It is a double angle sign. Usually given in a formula sheet, sine, I double angle sign. It's two sine A cos A. So I write just that. In this section, you don't write what you don't know. You only write what you know. I know this one, I can make it sine over cos. I know this one, I don't know this one, so I forget about it. So I don't have to stress with things that I don't know. So this will be what? This is two sine x cos x minus this I don't know, what will turn it to be? So I write it as it is. It's minus two cos squared x. This is what I have. This is what I have so far. Okay, let's move on. Let's work on this part. This then will give me, there's an LCD which is the same now. It makes my life easier when these two are the same. So if I've got cos x, what do I have on the numerator? I just have sine x exactly as it is, minus cos x. You do it, this into this goes once, one times sine x, it's sine x. You follow the sign, cos x into cos x goes once, one times cos x, it will give us that one cos x. Remember that we are multiplying here. Okay, whatever I do, I don't forget what I want to get. What I want to get is in this form. There's two outside, there's one, and so on and so forth. Right, I can see the common factor here. In this part of bracket, I can see what is common. My eyes are important. I use my eyes a lot. I open my mathematical eye when I do this problem. I can see this, I can see this. I don't think about it, I don't calculate it. I can see cos x in this term and cos x in this term. So I can see my common factor. What is the common factor in this one? Let me just put it in this kind of brackets because I'm gonna take out a common factor. What is my common factor between this term and this term? It is two, I see it. It is two. Is there any other factor that is common between these two terms? Yes, there's cos, there's another cos. Cos of x, cos x, cos x, in two. All right, let's see what we have now. If we take out two and cos x this side, what are we left with? We're just left with sine x, so we push it in here, sine x minus. We've already de dealt with this two, which is outside, one cos is outside, so we're left with only one cos this side. So it's cos x, right. This is what we have. Don't forget to close your bigger bracket. Now, how do we move from here? <coughs> Remember, as I do this, my focus is also there. This is what I want to get. Remember one thing and one thing only. What is it that I see here? I see the two is outside. It helps to understand that x times two times y, it is the same as two times x times, it doesn't matter which one you start with, as long as you are multiplying, it will, it will give you the same thing. Right, we've got the same scenario here. This is multiplied by this, is also multiplied by that. So in this three, I can start with anyone as I've shown you in this one. Why am I thinking along those patterns? Because I can see that they've, 
that, uh, that started with, with, the, with the two. So when I multiply this and that and that, let's do it this way so that life will be easier. Because we are multiplying, we can't do this. So that we can, something, we can have something which is, which is not a fraction. I hate working with fractions. So you always try, to try and take them out. So we've got this, this multiplied by that, multiplied by that. So I can start with this and say this is the same as this multiplied by this multiplied by that. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. What is prompting me towards that position is what I want to get at the end. Because I always check what I want to get at the end. Asambene, we've got this two. It is multiplied by this one. What is this? This is sine x sisusa who cos x. That's what we had from this bracket. We've already multiplied by two. We also multiplied by this one. What is this? Oh, looking at it helps. Because I, I see that I've got sine x minus cos. What do I have this side also? I've got sine x minus cos. So because I'm writing for only three hours, I always try and cut corners where I can. Rather than writing the same thing, mathematically I can do that because it is one and the same thing. Sine x minus cos, sine x minus cos. So this is square. Now, your, your, your grade eight and nine becomes very important in your mathematics because you always have to go back. Remember this and this thing. If I've got x plus two, this, sub, this topic was called squaring a binomial. You are just squaring it. How do we do, how do, we do this? There are three steps. Step number one, we say x times x is x squared. We multiply the first term by the first term. Step number two, you multiply the first term by the second term and double your answer. So it's x times two is two x. Double that, it is four x. Two times two, it is four. So this is how we do squaring a binomial. Remember this comes handy when you do calculus as well. The first principle, you usually use this x plus h all squared. If you've missed out the grade nine, go on a challenge. Let's close that gap here. What is this? Remember there are only three steps. Step number one, you multiply the first term by the first term. Step number two, you multiply the first term by the second term and double your answer. Step number three, you multiply the second term by the second term. Let's do this. X times X gives us X squared. X times H gives us XH. Double your solution, it will give us two XH. And H times H, it will give us H squared. Squaring a binomial, your grade eight, grade nine becomes in. It's the same thing. This stands for X this umenda and the h. So you do the same process as that one. Let's do this together. This is two into, what is the first term times the first term? So it's sine x times sine x, it will give us sine squared x. You multiply the first term and the second term, then you double your solution. You've got sine x times negative cos x, it will give us minus sine x cos x. You double that, it's gonna be minus two sine x cos x. The last step, you multiply the second term by the second term. So it's minus times minus, it's gonna give us plus, cos x times cos x, it gives us cos squared of x. Right, we close that bracket as well. Remember, as I said, I always preach this one and over and over again, that we use our eyes. Why do we use our eyes? We want to check whether, is there anything that we can identify with on the other side? And at the same time, we don't lose what we want, want to get. We've got two into ah, this and that. Sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to one. So this part becomes very important. So I can see that here. I can see sine squared x plus cos squared x. So what is sine squared x plus cos squared x? Take this out, push one, because it is equal to one. I don't know what exists. I write it as I see it. It's minus two sine x cos x. I check what I want, exactly what I wanted to get. So this is exactly equals to that. Then I conclude that the left hand side is equals to the right hand side.